All right, music fans, welcome back. Harmless Dave here again. Hopefully this microphone is working properly. Uh, talking about real music in real time for a few real people, just like you and just like me. So Dolly Parton has decided to accept the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame uh, nomination. Uh, if she wins, she says that she will accept the award gracefully. Now, this is interesting. Now, she's out there promoting her new book. She has a new novel called Run, Rose, Run with co-author James Patterson. <laughs> she's done everything. Look, I understand why maybe she should be nominated uh, for the Hall of Fame. But to me, this sounds a lot like, hey, we need more women. So this year, you know, we've got Kate Bush and uh, Pat Benatar and Dionne Warwick and Carly Simon. Pretty good crop. Maybe all the ladies should just win. Maybe they should. And uh, we could also consider maybe at some point nominating the amazing Patti Smythe, not Patti Smith, who I believe might already be in, which <laughs> a lot of people don't even know who Patti Smith is. But a lot of people who grew up in my era know who Patti Smythe is. She is the warrior, bang, bang. And she is one of the finest female singers ever. Uh, in fact, Don Henley and a number of other people uh, have used uh, Patti's voice, not just the voice, but her talented singing abilities on their solo records. Of course, Patti Smythe and Don Henley teamed up for an amazing duet called Sometimes Love Just Ain't Enough, which I'm sure you remember, one of the ultimate tear-jerking songs. Uh, meanwhile, this whole thing with Dolly Parton, I guess I'm okay with it. Uh, I like the fact that Dolly said, look, this is the rock and roll. She just made a simple deduction. She's like, this is the rock and roll hall of fame. I'm, I'm not rock and roll. I'd like to do a rock and roll album. And I think Nancy Wilson from Heart actually reached out to her and said, hey, let's do a rock album together. <laughs> we can make you more rock and roll right away. So next year you can be considered and feel as though you've got something uh, to offer the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. In any event, she said, I'll accept this gracefully. I would just say thanks and I'll accept it because the fans vote. Because when I said that, it was always my belief that the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame was for people in rock music. And I have found out lately that's not necessarily true. Yes. So what she's noticed is they're putting things into the Hall of Fame. See, this is like when you have this realization, hmm, I thought this was called the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. What's going on here, people? Why do they keep nominating things? that aren't in the rock category. And then of course you've got the president or the commander in chief of the Hall of Fame come out and say, you know, we're very diverse here at the Hall of Fame. We don't really care if you're rock and roll. You just need to have some kind of spirit about you, which is, you know, promoting youth culture or something to that effect. So in the future folks, you can just brace yourselves for some of the things that are probably going to be put into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It's only going to get more ridiculous as time goes on. So Dolly Parton, who's had a number of pop radio hits that have crossed over from country to the Billboard pop charts. I don't think she's had, had any rock radio hits, but that's okay because people don't remember rock radio. You know, you go on YouTube and you got the YouTubers you know, who are saying, how come this song wasn't a hit? And I just like shake my head and go, you weren't alive in 1981, obviously. So you don't know what the radio was like in 1981. I had this station up in Boston called WCOZ and their playlist was like an absolute kitchen sink list of so many different things. In one hour, you could hear ACDC, Elvis Costello, Linda Ronstadt. I mean, and that's the way it was on rock stations. By the way, you could play mellow songs on rock stations and not have people think, well, there's just not enough testosterone 
on this station. Believe me, they'll rock out. If they weren't rocking out on that last track, on the next one, they'll get back to rocking out, you know? But this definition of what rock has become, this brooding, dark, death metal sound, and it's not, I don't mean it all sounds like death metal, but that imagery comes to mind. So Dolly Parton, does she fit that? No. <laughs> Did she cross over onto Billboard? Yes. Everybody remembers nine to five, right? That was the biggest one. But she sang songs with Kenny Rogers. Is Kenny Rogers in the Hall of Fame? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure he's in the Country Hall of Fame. And was it his first band there? The first edition was going to call them New Edition, but that would have been a big mistake. Um, I don't think they're in the Hall of Fame. And they were incredibly influential, although uh, only around for a short period of time. My point is that, okay, if you're going to do this by, is it better that Dolly Parton get into the Hall of Fame as opposed to Eminem? And I'm going to be like, of course, of course. But please do some better selecting when it comes to the format. But they're basically admitting here that they're not going to do that kind of selection. Um, she goes on here to say that, you know, uh, these people who are being put into the Hall of Fame, some of them don't really fit into the Hall of Fame, but uh, I just felt like I'd be taking away from someone else that maybe deserved it, certainly more than me, because I never considered myself a rock artist, but obviously there's more to it than that. So Dolly, unfortunately, finds out the hard way that this particular format doesn't mean anything. I mean, when are they going to start putting R&B artists into the Country Hall of Fame? Because the country music scene right now is filled with people using these click tracks and this synthesized banjo and this R&B backbeat, and it has nothing to do with traditional country music. So you may start, you know, putting in maybe people who influenced those current uh, crop of country artists to sound like R&B singers with a banjo, because that's kind of what's been going on over there for a number of years. I don't think you're going to see that, though. The Country Music Hall of Fame, they've got to put in all of those people from the 80s and 90s. I think that would be more appropriate than worrying about Kane Brown or whoever is uh, the latest thing right now. And again, I might be dating myself by a couple of years and I haven't paid all that much attention to it. The point I'm trying to make is, can we just have the Rock Hall of Fame be about rock? The Country Hall of Fame can be about country. And if you want to make a rap and hip hop Hall of Fame, I mean, that'll be the biggest night in television, right? If you do that, I won't be watching it. But if you do the hip hop and maybe there's already a Hall of Fame for those styles. But man, oh man, if there's somebody that wants to buy out a decent old building and renovate it and put in all of the hip hop and R&B and rap stars in there, by all means, that's a money-making proposition for sure based on where the music is currently headed these days. So again, Dolly Parton had the right instincts, but now she's just going with the flow. I don't blame her. I mean, if she gets in, she gets in, right? It's better than Eminem and A Tribe Called Quest. But uh, after all of this uh, fuss that she made, maybe they're all like, okay, she had her chance to get in, but we're moving on to people who are more what we're all about, appealing to youth culture. So look for Eminem and um, A Tribe Called Quest to get in <laughs> and Carly Simon, poor Carly Simon. I hope she gets in. I mean, these artists that are getting a little bit long in the tooth, it, it's sad. It's like when the Moody Blues got put in, they're all so old. Their drummer passed away like a year or two later. Um, their flute player, he was at Ray Thomas. He passed away like a couple of months or so before the Hall of Fame. So yeah, these people continue to wait and wait to nominate these Captain Obvious Choices. And by the time they do it, you know, it's going to be posthumously, if at all. So 
Anyway, a few thoughts on the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and Dolly Parton. Needless to say, I won't be watching for that. I know you can, I think, pay to watch it or something. I usually just watch the videos of the acceptance speeches the next day and the occasional performance if it's somebody I'm interested in. Anyway, folks, thanks for watching. Don't forget to support the channel over on Patreon. Also, subscribe and then hit the bell for notifications. My name is Dave, and I will see you soon.